Hey Internet, this is Jacob Clifford. One of the reasons why you should study economics is because it'll help you look at any event, figure out what's going on, and what should be done about it. Case in point. Tonight, panicked families are struggling to find formula to feed their babies. In eight states and here in D.C., more than 50% of all formula products were out of stock. Basic supply and demand show that a shortage can be caused from one of two things. Either it's an increase in demand or it's a decrease in supply. So for baby formula, which one is it and what can be done about it? Let's look at some economics in real life. Let's start with demand. For example, maybe the demand increased for baby formula because there's more babies. Yes, the birth rate in the United States did increase, but not nearly that much. Definitely not enough to cause a massive shortage. Okay, so maybe it was some other demand shifter, like an increase in the price of a substitute. Well, other than breastfeeding, there's not many substitutes for baby formula. People just really need it, which is part of the reason why there's a shortage. But the problem isn't on the demand side its supply. Back in 2021, two babies died from a possible bacteria contamination from baby formula. The Food and Drug Administration recalled some brands and shut down a factory in Michigan while they were conducting their investigation. In a highly competitive market, having only one factory shut down isn't that big of a deal. Other companies would ramp up productions and other firms would jump in the market and customers would get what they want. But there's three things about the production of baby formula that made the shortage worse. First, it's produced in an oligopoly. That is a market controlled by only a few large firms. Four companies control 90% of the market. So when their factory closed, supply shifted to the left and there weren't many other existing companies to ramp up production. Shortage. Second, baby formula is highly regulated, which makes sense because we should protect babies from harmful chemicals, but that also means that other firms couldn't quickly enter the market. So even if a new company made baby formula with the right vitamins and nutrients, it would take months or years to get FDA approval. So when the supply shifted left, other firms couldn't quickly jump in that market shortage. And number three, the U.S. government has strict rules that outlaw importing baby formula. If businesses in your own country can't produce something, you can always buy it from another country. But in this case, you can't. So import restrictions and requiring American babies to only drink formula that's made in America made things worse. Shortage. Okay, that's what happened, but what should be done about it? In the short run, there's not much that can be done until that factory is inspected and cleared to open. But because you know economics, you know there's something we shouldn't do, which is try to cap prices. New York's attorney general threatened several dozen retailers with legal consequences for overcharging. It seems counterintuitive, but in a crisis, higher prices might be a good thing. It encourages those other existing businesses to produce more and have their workers work overtime. And it incentivizes people to transport and sell for to places that need it the most. In the long run, the government needs to re-examine its regulation policies. It's very possible that the FDA was right in shutting down that factory saved hundreds of innocent babies. On the other hand, maybe the FDA moved too quickly and should have inspected the factory without actually closing it. The government should also re-examine its import restrictions. When there's a shortage, does it really make sense to have the Border Patrol crack down on foreign-made baby formula? People needed to feed their babies, and meanwhile, the Border Patrol was seizing formula like it was cocaine. Notice that identifying the problem is a lot easier than identifying the solution. And that's another reason why you should study economics. If you understand how markets and the economy work, you'll know the difference between policies that are designed just to get votes and policies that can actually fix the problem. And that is economics in real life. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're a teacher, I made a worksheet that goes along with this video. You can download it right now and give it to your students. If you're a student, take a look at my ultimate review packet and be sure to subscribe. I'm going to make more videos to help you learn and love economics. Thanks for watching. Till next time.